Area to think about if you dial 911 for help and an ambulance may not come. Well, some parts of the country are dealing with just that. Absolutely, and our Polina Butska finds out how a nationwide ambulance shortage is impacting our valley. While the rest of the country is experiencing ambulance shortages, here in Las Vegas, those I spoke to say that they have been aggressively pursuing ways to combat that. In an overflowing lot, Community Ambulance Senior Director Glenn Simpson explains uh, how the company no has grown right. since 2016. Back in 2016, uh, we were responsible for about 18% of the call volume in Clark County. Um, and as of last month, we're responsible for uh, just over 60% of that call volume. His fleet of over 70 ambulances Ambulances is a hodgepodge of different types of ambulance vehicles. A lot of it of what we're experiencing is having to procure used um, ambulances or we're having to take boxes off of our ambulances and when we're able to find a chassis, be able to put that box on the chassis. The shortage is resulting in additional costs. Costs to accrue new ambulances, retrofit old ones, and cross train his team of over 700 paramedics on how to use the fleet. Ideally, it's, it's better for us to be able to buy um, something right off of the production line, brand new. Um, we haven't really been able to do that over the past few years. We also reached out to the Las Vegas Fire Department, and they too have been impacted by the shortage. They say that they're implementing alternative strategies to minimize wear and tear on their vehicles to maximize their lifespan. On a national front, Damon Schilling with AMR Medic West says they haven't experienced the hardship smaller more local companies have. Because of our national footprint, we haven't really seen anything yet either. We do have the ability to reallocate ambulances around to different operations throughout the country. He explains it's a okay. manufacturing issue. A smaller ambulance companies ordering two or three ambulances, but they're in behind a, maybe a large municipality like uh, AMR, somebody from LA or New York or Chicago who maybe just ordered 17, you know? and maybe another company ordered 24. So while they're only asking for three, which is a reasonable number, they're like 145th in actual like acquisition line. Here in Las Vegas, while there has been some struggles for our local ambulances, Simpson says we have nothing to worry about when it comes to safety and calling 911. We've been very fortunate in that we're not, we're not, we're not short. So we're not, we're not experiencing the, what others may be experiencing in that we're not able to put ambulances out on the road. And this is a larger issue impacting other cities and towns across the country. And some say it is creating life or death consequences for communities where access to health care is already a challenge. And the problem began in 2020 when the COVID-19 pandemic brought global trade to a halt, preventing automakers from getting enough of the microchips and other parts that are really critical to making modern cars, trucks and ambulances. As a backlog grew, EMTs like Jennifer Cowan say they had more and more trouble with their aging vehicles. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. We can't help people if we can't get to people. We are their hospital. We're their ER until we can get them to a facility. That is so true. And the U.S. Department of Transportation data shows in 2021, there were reported 13,540 mechanical failures that prevented ambulances from responding. And in 2022, that figure climbed to nearly 15,000, a 10% increase.